Lord showed me how they blended. So the Lord was dealing with me about accountability and responsibility. Uh, they kind of run in the same lanes, but they're not the same thing. So responsibility is what you're responsible, what you're personally responsible for. Accountability is who, you're, who you are accountable to. And in the body of Christ, a lot of saints don't like accountability. They want responsibility, but they don't want to be accountable about what their responsibilities are. First, to have responsibilities, you got to gain trust. That's just like the Lord. He's not going to give you something that he can't trust you with. All right. So if he can't trust you with it, then he's not going to you know, put you responsible. You're not going to be held responsible for it. And when you get responsibility, you ought to want to be accountable for it. That's right. If something go wrong, whether it be personally or in the body of Christ, somebody got to be held in account for it. And so that's what mine is. So I'm going to be speaking on accountability and responsibility. So Tanya is doing accountability and responsibility. Mine Hi. is grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. Grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. A lot of times people get those mixed up. Okay? God gives you grace because you didn't know what you was doing with the people. Mm -hmm. He gives you mercy when you repent that you did something that you don't let grace be something that you 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 use just to say, oh, God will give me grace. It's okay. I'm gonna be all right. No, 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 no. Grace is not for excuses. Grace is for growth. And in here, God has given us so much. He's poured so much into us. We don't have an excuse. Okay. We give a lot of excuses, but there's no excuse for some of the things that we do, okay? And then we rely on his mercy. Lord, have mercy on me, because you know I just needed to do that for that moment. Okay, you can have his mercy if you want to. There's still going to be an accountability for what you did. Exactly. And that's where the responsibility comes in. So if you do it, own up to it. Right. You did it. Right. So we, that's what we get it mixed up in. It's our responsibility to know. But then when we don't, that's when the grace comes in. Mm -hmm. But if you know and you do it anyway, that's where the responsibility comes in. You can't, you can't do that. You can, but it ain't right. So, like she said, if, if God gives you grace in the matter, now you know. So next time, Don't always fall back. Well, I'm gonna repent about it later. Uh, Lord, I just needed to say what I needed to say, and I'm gonna repent about it later. You don't know if you got that later. All right. Stop banking on later. You only have right now. And that next breath is not promised. And in that sense, the same way the Lord gives us grace and mercy, we should give other people grace. In that same mercy. I had an incident this week and um, I was attacked. And I was like, first, my first thing was, Lord, did I do something? Okay, let me let me go back over this and see. So yeah, mm -hmm. no, uh -uh. all I did was took a breath. And that's all I did. I was just in the room. And I got offended. But then later on, the more I talked about it, the more I thought about it, I said, well, you know, I don't know what happened with that person. I don't know what they was going through. And yes, in the moment, I was ready. I was ready. <laughs> now, but I gave them grace because somebody gave me grace. I have not always been 
to the point where I don't take out my frustrations on other people. Because you take it out on the closest people to you. Right. And so that's what I began to say. I said, well, when we was in service the other day, the other week, the Lord said, get somebody in your mind and begin to pray for them. Well, this is the person I was praying for. And see, you know, later on in the day, the Lord said, did you think that you weren't going to have a fight? Because you're praying for them. It's like when you're praying for somebody's salvation. The closer they get and the more convicted they are, they, the more they lash out at you. That's right. And so this was the very person that I was praying for that was attacking me. And I said to myself, I said, something working. Yeah. God, this got to be working for them to be attacking me. Like, they don't know that I'm praying for them. So I said, God, you know what? I ain't going to stop. I said, devil, you just showed your hand. I'm going to continue. So pray for them. Yeah. Let me tell you, throughout the course of the week, before it was over, and I can't get rid of them. Because I graced them mercy. That maybe they didn't deserve, but I didn't deserve it at one point either. Right. It was my responsibility to be Christ-like. So that when I'm held accountable, <coughs> did you treat them the way I treated you? See, that's where the responsibility come in. Honey, we always, we quick to, to always just let people get on our nerves and rattle us. But what are we doing? Where's our responsibility and accountability in that? No, I ain't responsible for somebody else's actions. But I am responsible of how I react to somebody else's, uh, what they're doing to me. Or what they're doing. So... That's where the grace and the mercy comes in to help the accountability and responsibility. Because we're always talking about, oh, I want to be just like just like Jesus. Lord, help me to be more like him. Well, guess what? Grace and mercy is one of his one of the qualities, uh, two of the qualities of his characteristics. It tells you that in Exodus 34, 6 and 9. When Moses was describing God's graciousness as he was walking past. Y'all, we got to be accountable for everything that we have been taught. There's no more excuses. Time out for that. People are looking for real people. Okay? And right now, Christians have a very bad name because of the way they treat other people. Remember they had to say the, the uh, acronym WWJD? What would Jesus do? So in those moments of your, I need to do this, I'm going to go ahead and do this, blah, 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 blah. What would Jesus do? And whatever you do, you will be held accountable for. Don't sit there and act innocent when God come through with that switch. You get it. So what you're saying is, when you say accountability and responsibility, what you're saying is, I have a choice. Right. I have a choice in the matter, whether I do right or whether I do wrong. But I'm accountable for the actions that I do. And thank God for grace mm -hmm. and mercy. Right. And like you said, <laughs> WW, what would Jesus do? When we ask the question, do we really mean what we ask? Right, right. Because it doesn't do me any good to say, I, what would Jesus do? And then I get up and say the wrong thing, or I say something out of my feelings, or I say something out of my hurt. Jesus never said anything out of his feelings or his hurt. Whatever he said was true, and whatever he said was the word. And he acted accordingly. So when we say we want to act like Jesus, and we want to, sometimes, as you said, accountability, we put the count up the cause. Right. And how we want to act like Jesus or act like God or act like a Christian should be. Because it's a fight. And like you say, when you're praying for somebody, the very person you praying for is the very person laughing out at you and you say, look, I'm praying for you. But, the, <clears throat> but I think one thing is when we do pray, I think we need to do like the scripture say, put on the whole arm of God. Wow. If, 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 you know when you get, if you're mad at somebody, you know, you go home and get ready to fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but I'm gonna hit him with my left and I'm gonna hit him with You get yourself ready for the fight. Mm -hmm. But why is a Christian get their left ready for the fight too? Mm -hmm. 
we in a fight. We in a spiritual fight. So we should be getting ready for the fight. Getting ready. In other words, if, if somebody comes back and you come back, you realize that right quick. Yeah, you talking about it. You saying things. Well on the same token, how come you ain't prepared when folks come up and you a Christian? Then you should be ready. Even though they fussing and cussing and saying something, but the word God said. The Lord said. You should be ready to give them an answer or give them a, a situation where it may it flips it back on them and say, you know, I don't know if I should have said that. And like you say, Christians get attacked. And the thing about it is, that with us as being Christian, we ain't in for the short run. We ain't for the long run. And we need to pre prepare. And the only way some people are going to see Christ or see God is in us. But if we acting crazy, we acting unresponsible, we acting unaccountable, they ain't gonna say, I'm gonna act just like him. He, he's the preacher. And you know that preacher says some things, so that means I can say some things. If he, if he acted like that, well, I seen the preacher act like that, I seen the Christian act like that, I'm gonna act just like that. Because I think that it's okay for me to, and no matter how many times you hear, you can come back and you can say, Oh, I was sorry, I didn't mean to say that, please forgive me. But it's your action. Right. It's the way you act. So, like you say, be accountable and be responsible. And the thing is that every day, you know, as we, as we ask for grace and we ask for mercy, God help me. Be what you have me to be. But sometimes I'll lose it. Sometimes I'll get upset. Sometimes I'll get mad. And I need that grace. And I need that mercy. So help me. And that's why we constantly need to be Lord, help me do it right now. And the Holy Spirit will lead you and guide you. He'll lead you and guide you. If you do something out of the way, he'll check you if you listen. He'll definitely check you because he's checked me several times and I'm like, oh, okay. And he don't wait a while to do it. Right when it come out your mouth, he will check you right then and there. And whether or not you own up to it, well, hey. Okay. All right, so uh, like Pastor was saying, when you talk about accountability and responsibility, one of the first things I thought of is why? everybody nowadays wants a title. That's why we have so many people around here with titles nowadays. They want the title, but they don't want the responsibility right. that goes along with the title. They don't see what the Bible says about that title. And they don't want the accountability of answering to anybody. Exactly. They want to say, well, I hear from God too. Yeah, you hear from God, but God has an order. He does things in order of who you're accountable to. So it's not just, oh, I feel like I, I, I should be this, so I'm this. No. David was anointed king, but he didn't wear the crown right away. He had to go through some stuff for it. Are you willing to go through to earn the responsibility to be accountable for what you're doing? And also with grace and mercy, we, like she said, oftentimes, well, God will forgive me. He'll give me mercy. He'll, but you know what? God get mad too. He get tired. He get sick and tired. Think about an exodus. Moses had to go to the Lord and say, please spare him. Well, that's the Old Testament. Well, let's look at the New Testament. Jesus said, let this cup pass from me. I don't want to go through this. I'm sick of this. I'm tired of this. But he did it anyway. So we can't continuously just be like, well, God will forgive me. I'm going to do this, but God will forgive me. What if in the midst of your sin, the Lord says, that's enough. That's enough. And he turns you over to yourself. Mm -hmm. And he says, if you think that you know what's best for you, I'll let you have it. Yes, my grace and mercy is there for you, but obviously you don't want me. It's just like a man or a woman that keeps getting rejected. Oh, you you don't want you've told me enough times that you don't want me. So I, I won't pursue you anymore. <laughs> what if God was to say that to us? 
Because we keep telling him, I know what I want. I'm going to get what I want. I know what's best for me. I know what's going to make me happy. What if God was to say to us, okay, do your thing then. Grace and mercy is a beautiful thing. It's a wonderful thing. It's an abundant thing. But do you know how many times it will take before God says, enough's enough. Do you know his magic number for you when he's going to say, okay, you do your own thing and take my hands off of you? What if the last time was the last time? What are you going to do next? We so banking on grace and mercy. God's been so good to us. You know, he always get us out of a mess. Some people say, well, I ain't, I ain't going to church today. I, the Lord speaks to me. And whatever God got for me, I'll get it. Have you ever went to a service and you got there at the last minute and everybody said, we had a time. I don't want to hear that. I don't want to hear that. I wanted to be in on the party. But you know what? We said, okay, God, what's for me is for me. It was there for you at 10 o'clock. You were there at 10 o'clock. You didn't meet God man. You depended on grace and mercy to give you what you missed. And God is saying, he, what did he tell? When he told the children, he said, I want y'all to meet me at the tent, at the door. The only places I see, good morning, Pastor. The only places I see in the Old Testament, when God called the 12 tribes, and two twin brothers wasn't there, they were out doing something. And the same thing that the other 10 got, the two got. It's not going to always be that way with you. You banking on your mom and daddy, grace and mercy. Oh, I ain't worried about it. I know the church praying for me. I know my mama praying for me. When you get old enough to tell me you grown, that means you grown in your pocketbook, you grown in where you need to live, you grown to buy your own clothes, but I'm not gonna ever tell God, I'm old enough, I, I, I know enough, you don't have to tell me nothing. I can get my own grace, I can get my own mercy. Because when you reject God, that's what you're saying to him. When you reject him, when he tell you, when you make a commitment, I'm going to be, I'm going to come, and I'm going to do this at the church, I'm going to do that. I've had many people to come to me and say, Bishop, the Lord told me to come and sit at your feet. And when people tell me that, I'll be saying, oh, Lord, what am I about to go through? The Lord told me to come and be with you. Them people fight me worse than somebody that sits humbly and just wait on God to feed them. One lady said, God told me to come and sit at your feet. She got so upset with me. She jerked me by the arm. And she, I, I don't know if you remember the sheep at the time. And when she jerked me, it pulled my back. Yeah. And I had to let my back go so I could stop Tanya and Sheba because they saw her. And I said, uh-uh, uh-uh, God got this. But I was hurting so bad. I said, God got this, don't you make a move. You know what? I knew that if they would have attacked God's anointing, out of order, but she was still God's anointing. And I knew that if they would attacked her, God would have dealt with them severely. But she was God anointed. His grace and mercy was still there for her. Y'all, sometimes we look at people and, and you know what? This person thought she knew me. You know, I knew her when so and so. I knew her then. You listen. I've been knowing Apostle Troy over 40 years. But I never get out of place 
with the anointed one in my life. Because I know when I get out of order, sometimes all it, all it takes is a mouthpiece. Do you not know your, your pastor becomes your attorney, your mouthpiece, when you out of order? They'll go before God for you. Yo, I was talking to uh, Sister Martha, and, and anytime I talk, I said, how you doing, Sister Martha? Bishop, I can't complain. I just can't complain. And I looked at her life, and we were talking last night, and I said, you know what? It's a choice. It's a choice. All she going through. She could say, yada, yada, yada. Yes. But she don't. It's a choice. God gave us a choice. We can stay in that hole if we want to. Right. Yes. It's a choice. Right. It's not anybody else's responsibility to come and save you. Uh, Sometimes you got to get out the hole yourself. Yes. You know what you're doing. You know what you... Sometimes we want to have them, them, them gray clothes on. Yeah. And after I try to help you so long, you know what? Okay. It's other people out, who, out there that won't help. Now, if you want to stay in the hole, stay in the hole. If you, you know, I, it always brings me back to, I, I was, um, something funny I was thinking about the other day is, um, can y'all imagine Ahab going, and he want this man thing. He can't hang, so he go, what he do? He go back home and he fall out on the bed. He begs, he this, he that. He have a whole tantrum. He had a whole tantrum. Pity this, and I'm not going to eat, and I'm not going to do this, and I'm not going to do this. Then Jezebel comes in. And had this man killed, and never... I done, I done had him kill. Get on up. Go get the name you want. See, what we don't understand is sometimes we can wallow in self-pity and cause somebody else to die ah, oh no. over us and what yeah. we want. If you can't have it, you can't have it. I don't know why. Why? Why did this? I don't know. The thing about it is, it's a growing pain. You got to sacrifice, or not sacrifice, um, set aside the things that you want in order to do what God needs you to do. Because what he has for you is better than what you really want for yourself. Amen. But you got your eyes so focused on this one thing that you're willing to do any and everything to get it. Whether it's having a pity party, whether it's, it's, it's trying to get unnecessary attention, whether it's is doing stuff that you ain't got no business doing and then having to reap the repercussions of that and hold yourself accountable for, for what you did. God has so much for us and he wants so much for us. Get in your place. Just get in your place. You know, you know when you, I, I thought about it when you were talking about Ahab. Yeah. Had the pity party. In the pity party. I don't want to be responsible. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't want to be accountable. Yep. Mm -hmm. right if I cry long enough to the bishop, she's going to give me the answer that I already want. Mm -hmm. Come on. Go get her. Come on. And take the link. Mm -hmm. Ain't you kidding? Mm -hmm. Ain't you better position? Why are you laying here crying? That's why I wanted you to tell me the first thing. Because I didn't have the nerve enough to do what I needed to do. So I had to get somebody else to tell me what I needed to do. Keep this man clean. Uh -huh. See, watch the pity part. Yeah. All the pity part is the fact is I just want you to agree with me mm -hmm. that I need yeah. So how can I get out of the pit? I don't want the right way to get out of the pit. Give me the easy way to get out of the pit. Uh -huh. I want this man clean. <laughs> mm -hmm. So I'm laying there crying. <laughs> so who I go to? Go to the nasty person. I don't go to the good person and say, hey, son, stop that. That's the wrong thing. I go to the nasty person I find and pull, my, pull out my crying in my pocket. You know, you can take your land. 
you offered him a price, but he act like he didn't want it. Now go get him. You bring it. Oh, I can do that? Oh, yeah. He stood up, killed him, and then they asked him five by himself, didn't he? See, that's what the pity part is. Mm -hmm. Tell me how to, be, how to be wrong. You get away with it. Because he forgot. God right. forgot. So watch out, pity for him. Because he's just an excuse for you to do what you want to do. God can get up and do the right thing. Or I can just complain. But it's so good that I don't have to. I, I, I made a choice that I'm not going to complain no matter what I go through. He wants me. He cares about me. He wants me to do good. And I want to do good. So watch the pity for it. Because if, 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 if a covenant is agreeing, if I can agree with you to do the right thing, why should I agree with you to do the wrong thing? That's all we had one. It wasn't an excuse. And you talked about it. Accountability and responsibility. And you said, when I got a position, oh, I can be accountable and responsible when I want to be. Because it ain't, it, 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 it's not about the simple fact of being accountable. It's the position. Uh. I can be accountable when you appoint me to be something. But when you don't appoint me to be nothing, I don't want to be accountable. I'm just going And then one thing I want to say one thing, when you say it about people at your feet, it's a process. Yes, it is. When you can't stay at your feet and be taught, it's pride. Yeah. I know what you know. Yeah. I know everything you know. <laughs> Why well, I got to stay at your feet? Why the Lord tell me to stay at your feet? To learn, to be accountable and responsible, to learn what you need to learn at the feet. How you going to learn if you're at the top? How you going to learn if, if I'm sitting up there? I can't learn there. But if I come down and humble myself and be there, what, what you say? Is, is I'm doing this right? Is this should be done right? You're saying move here, move there, watch this, say this, don't say this, do this. That's being accountable and responsible. You see, see, most people, the reason why they want the position, then they go through what it takes to get the position. They're looking for a shortcut. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They looking to be famous. Uh -huh. Well, if I'm up there, everybody looked at me, I'm famous. But as you said a while ago, it's a price to pay to get there. Amen. It's a price. Amen. Because it, it's, it's going to take you some training, some praying, some studying, yeah. some fasting to get there. Because when you get there, you say, God said, well, now you're ready. Mm. He, they, they may call you minister. They may call you preacher. Don't be so quick to run that. Mm. Mm. Paul said, count up the cost. Because yeah, when you get there, <laughs> that is your trouble. They're going to talk about you, whether you're doing good or Preacher. doing bad, trying to do the right thing, yeah. trying to do all that you do. you praying for people. You think God puts people on your mind, and like you say, I'm praying for you. I'm praying for your salvation, and yet you just run me down like I'm a dog. Come on, preacher. And sometimes you being the preacher say, Lord, is, is it worth it? Mm. But then you say, yes, it is. Mm. Because you don't look for right now. You look for the end. As old folks say, I'm going to run on and see what they need. And it's a good end. Yeah. It's a good end. But, but the thing is, the thing is, all that come against you ain't to beat you down. It's to strengthen you where God is taking you. Because you got to be strong to be there. To know. Amen. Amen. Cause he had it in his mind, and she said it with her mouth, and she knew 
that she would do it. So who are we crying in front of? Right. Oh, come on. Yeah. It ain't hurting that bad. But we crying. We crying to get the attention. Whose attention though? Not God's. Right. Like he said, the evil person's attention. And if you got the attention of, I mean, I mean, Proverbs said uh, in uh, many councils is uh, wisdom. So you ain't trying to get the attention of bishop, uh, pastor, Troy, uh, pastor. You trying to get the attention of the son of man. They don't care what you do or how you do it. Just as long as you get done. And that's what Jezebel was. By any means necessary. And he knew that. So who, what did he do? Shine the light on what I want. Ain't that what babies do when they kick and holler and scream? It's cause you, you're not giving them what they want. And that's what Ahab did. Give me what I want. Give me what I want. And Jezebel, what's the matter with you? You know I can do that. That's a little now. They just kill him off and take it. And that's what she did. What was in his mind. She spoke it out of his mouth, out of her mouth, and made it come to pass. Oh, I want to jump back to what Tiny said real quick. Of how we stay in something longer mm -hmm. than if we were meant to stay in it. Mm -hmm. I want you to think about Lazarus. When before Lazarus died, they had called for Jesus. And he knew that Jesus, Jesus said, you know, I'll, I'll come, I'll, I'll be there later on. But Lazarus died. But I want to believe that the Lord spoke to Lazarus. He told Lazarus, this ain't gonna last long. Your grave clothes have an expiration date. So, when Jesus called Lazarus forth, Lazarus had a decision to make. Either I'm going to stay in here with the dead, and I'm going to continue to stay with the dead because I'm going to smell more like the dead, I'm going to feel more like the dead, and the attention will, it will remain on me. Or I can come out of it. What are you deciding? When God has said enough's enough, are you going to come out of the grave or are you going to stay there? Because that's where the attention is. Are you going to stay there? Because you know what? Okay, everybody thinking about me right now. Or are you going to come out and say, oh, I got more enough to do? Because the thing about it is, I believe that God had already told him Okay, when Jesus called you forth, you come, you you need to get up, you need to go forth. God has called some of us out of some stuff, but we're choosing to stay. We're choosing to stay there. And the whole time we say, God, when is it going to be time? He said, all you got to do is let go. If you let go and be obedient, because Jesus said, Lazarus, come forth. That means Lazarus had to make up in his mind that he was going to do something. He had to initiate the movement or just lay there and die. Some of us are choosing, I, God, I want you to do all of this for me. If you don't do it, then it ain't going to be done. Ain't. And God is saying, but I want you to put some effort in yourself. I want you to do something. I want you to take responsibility in this. I want you to have some accountability in this. So when they come back and say, how did you? I had to make up in my mind that I was going to live for God and I was going to do whatever God told me. And when he told me to come forth, I decided to come forth. I'm not going to stay where I was. I'm not going to live there. I'm not, I'm, who I was is not who I'm going to continue to be. We have to learn that God is saying, I will take you to the water, but you got to be the one to drink it. 
Otherwise, you'll be standing in front, front of the water hole hollering, I'm thirsty. <laughs> what more do you want God to do for you? He's telling you, I'll, I'll supply your needs. I'll do everything for you. But you've got to accept it. You've got to receive it. We keep saying, Lord, Lord, I'm grown and I, I can do this and this. I can do that. But guess what? You want God to, to force feed you like when you was a baby. But yet you're saying, I'm grown. It don't work that way. If it worked that way, then you would be a double-sided person, a double-minded person. And God said, I don't want you to be double-minded. I want you to be all in for me. How else can we walk around and say, I'm a child of God. He has raised me up. I have been reared in the, in the holy word. But yet we're still crawling around saying, goo goo ga ga. <laughs> And expect everybody to know what we're talking about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> no. You know, this message, it came to us first. God, was, God has been dealing with me about don't abuse my grace and mercy. Mm -hmm. Don't abuse it. Don't, abu don't abuse it. Don't, don't abuse it. Because if I take my hand back. Mm -hmm. That's what he was dealing with me about. Me and Tanya just talked, we only talked about the topic last night. You told me yours, and then I was like, I, well, I'm still, mine is still, you know. I just told her what mine was this morning. We didn't know how they would link until we got here. Because I was telling Trez, I don't know how God is going to do this, but I'm trying to get my notes and stuff together. I said, you know what, it's on you. Because <laughs> I don't want to be thinking, it's, and this can't just be for us. He gave it to us first. So now we're giving it to you. Don't just let it go in one ear and out the other. Self-evaluation. Um, I'm going to talk loud. be taught. How you gonna teach somebody? If you do not want to be taught by anyone, you're not gonna be teachable. You already know it all. Listen, I've seen, I've heard people say, the Lord told me, I've been ministering for five months. And he told me he was going to skip me over the other steps and I'm going to become an apostle. Mm -hmm. In other words, you're in first grade. And you graduating the second year. You have a go through what it takes. I used to, I used to tell everybody, go to the prom. Go to the prom if you gotta go by yourself. Because prom is like a, well, to me it was such a big event. Uh, if you don't go to the prom, go to some of the dances. Go to something, do something. Do something memorable. But we don't wanna do anything memorable. We wanna do something fabulous. I don't want to be. Uh, I don't want to be taught by nobody. The Lord done gave me all this. Now the uh, Paul said it well, right, but listen. Somebody said, "Well, Paul didn't go through all this." Oh, Paul went through something. Mm -hmm. He went through those forty days in the desert mm -hmm. with Jesus. Mm -hmm. He was blind. Mm -hmm. He was knocked down. Mm -hmm. He was. He was. He was. The, the disciples didn't want nothing to do with him. He went through some things. You want Paul's anointing, but you don't want his suffering. 
You want Jesus' seat. Yeah. But you don't want to drink out the cup. Come on now. Come on. You even get your mama to speak for you. Or your daddy or your cousin. My, my, my dad is a preacher. He'll get you in. They got a church open. You ain't, you've never sit up on anyone. And all of a sudden, because of what men say, you the pastor of this huge church. And what people don't realize, for a real pastor, you got demons waiting on you. They waiting on you to tell you who you are, who you're not, and what you're not going to do. And you got to deal with them people with grace and mercy. You go in there and you say to yourself, oh, let them come to me today. I got something for them. And when you get ready to grab hold of that door, the Lord said, do not say a word to my people. So you stand with tears in your eyes. And you hear the saying, somebody say, well, what did pastor do? Just stood up there and cried like a baby, acting like a fool. And you heard that, but you still got to give those people grace and mercy. You got to still minister to them. Look at Jesus, the very ones that abused him. He's still saved. Sometimes we shake our fists in his face. Sometimes we say, I don't want nothing to do with it. But guess what? When you get in trouble, mm -hmm. you call on Jesus and he have mercy. He said, what you play, pray in secret? Some people, what you do in secret, God will bless you openly. Now people do it openly. And they want the secret part too. Mm -hmm. If you would do what God Listen, I'm gonna say this. I, I was sharing with Tasha this week. I said, Tasha, I believe God would. I've been divorced for over 40 something years. And guess what? Jesus has been my husband man. I have not had to beg for nothing. Now let me let me make let me share this with you. There's a difference between begging and asking. Asking means you humble yourself mm -hmm. and you ask. And when you ask, somebody gonna talk about you every time you see old Jason B, she begs. And it wasn't, I, be, I asked, but I was paid back. And one of my friends said to me, don't you never beg nobody for nothing. I said, I didn't beg them. I asked them loan me so and so. And she said, they loaned it to you. I said, uh-huh. She said, and they talked about you like a dog. I said, I ate lunch that day. <laughs> it didn't bother me. I ate lunch. And she was so upset. She went and paid them for me. Excuse me. She said, I'm going to pay them for you. And if you need something else, don't you ask them if I had to go borrow it for you. That's a friend. Janella told me one time, she said, I'm going to put you on my income tax. <laughs> and I said, I don't think they pay for grown folks. And she said, well, give me one of your children. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? We could do that. Because she, she didn't even realize that she had to carry me. Why did she have to carry me? Because she, God gave her the grace to do it. And every time she will bless me, the Lord will bless her. And I told her, I said, girl, as much money as you spend on clothes, I can pay two bills and a car payment. But guess what? It's because she did not withhold what God, she, she had mercy and grace and pity on me. Can you have pity on people? Instead of saying, I ain't getting them nothing. They can work. They can do this. They got children. They may have children, but their children may not help them. Y'all, let's stop trying to be God and Lord over the lives of others and do what God say. Have grace, have mercy, and do have a little pity. She been telling you, y'all can finish it up.
scriptures is Ephesians chapter 2, 8 and 9. For by grace we have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It is the gift of God, not a result of works, so that we, excuse me, so that no one may boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Amen. Alex, would you take up the service? Good morning, please. 